old wet desert gold here. Uh, throwing this video together in response to a question I had that kind of intrigued me uh, with respect to a specific type of ammo um, in response to a question on my Glock Smile video. The question involved a uh, situation where he was curious as to why I wasn't having more KBs and um, KBs uh, are short for kabooms. And in the video, in my Vox Mile video, I actually did show a case that did go kaboom. Um, the, the biggest, there's a number of things that do cause greater incidence of, of failures, uh, most of them being lack of attention to details. For instance, um, again, as I mentioned, not paying attention to your brass, uh, not paying attention to your loads, uh, type of powder that you're using with the type of bullet weight that you're using. All of these factors uh, bullet seating depth, uh, they all play a part in um, the final outcome of, of the round and the pressures that the case is going to experience. As an example, <coughs> um, I just got back from the range in testing out some of the rounds that uh, I had previously loaded. I also um, wanted to address his specific question with respect to a company called MagSafe. Um, they produce a line of ammunition that is, uh, if you want to call it, pre-fragmented uh, in different calibers. They range from 25 ACP. Um, they go all the way up to 308, 762 by 39 pistol and rifle calibers, 40 Smith and Wesson. You name it, they've got a pre-fragmented round for it. Um, getting back to my statement, uh, one of the cases I was just looking at before I started filming was an expanded case from yesterday's or this earlier today's test firing. And um, it's already got, uh, I don't have the glass out or the magnifier out, but uh, it's got quite, quite the smile on it already going. And this uh, round has got two marks on it, or the case has two etchings from the extractor. So this one is suffering failure earlier. Well, why would that be? Um, probably because of the loads I use. I, I do um, tend to, as I mentioned, dance on the wild side a little bit with respect to that. But his question specifically pertained to the fact that um, the, this company, MagSafe, which is, I guess, a, uh, a round that he's in, interested in, is uh, advertising. And this one I got, I was, he was looking for the uh, swap round, uh, which is similar to this round. This is the Defender. It's got a higher grain, weight grain bullet. This is 84 grain. I believe the other one is a full B. 45 or 40. Can't remember the specific on the, on the swap round, but it isn't supposed to um, penetrate walls. This round, even though it's pre fragmented, the, the website indicates that they are leaning more towards uh, uh, fragmentation with some barrier penetration, i.e., car window or a couple of walls. My concern with that is now you're trying to 
create the best of all worlds in one round. Um, and you can make this analogous to uh, centuries old um, analogy uh, with regard to armor. The advances in armor as far as being more resistant to bullets uh, with respect to weight, how to get a, a armor vest capable of uh, withstanding higher caliber rounds without gaining too much weight. Um, companies spend millions of dollars trying to find that answer and every time they come up with one uh, the other side is going to spend millions of dollars to find something to defeat it. Same thing with this. If you develop a round that is going to fragment, well then you're giving up penetration. If you're going to keep the round capable of penetrating, then you're giving up fragmentation. So where where's the answer? Uh, this on the label here, and I'll bring it up close, see if we can get it on camera. It states that this is an 84 grain bullet doing 1800 feet per second with 604 foot pounds in a Glock 22. And at the end here, right on, um, above my finger, is low recoil. Now, anybody that uh, has been around weapons for a while knows that you get something that's doing 1800 feet per second the law of physics is going to dictate something with respect to recoil. I was a little leery of, of reading that because it didn't make sense to me before I opened the package that you could have something doing that kind of velocity uh, with a low recoil and I'm trying to justify it in my head with the, the light bullet weight at 84 grains, which isn't really all that light when you think about it. His question centered around the fact that this kind of load is right at the edge of safety. And um, the Sammy specs for, you know, velocity and, and pressures that these cases, especially the 40. The 40s and the 10s, they, they are building pressure a lot quicker than some of your other rounds. Uh, if, you, if you lose concentration on reloading a 40, you're going you're gonna to have a dicey situation really quick. And in the video, I, I fired, you'll see, I, I start off with this and um, it actually surprised me with the recoil because uh, my test gun, um, this is half of it, I'm cleaning the weapons that are in the cleaning process right now, was a Glock 27. Now, in some of my videos you can see that I am no recoil sensitive individual, I, I will fire anything from 50 Beowulfs to 450 Porcasols, 500 Smith & Wesson. I don't mind. In fact, I'll, like I keep mentioning, my my uh, personal loads are dialed up to the, to the limits of what the powder and the bullet weight dictate. Even with that being said, um, a factory manufactured round can suffer a failure or go over the limit and this is one of only two cases that I was able to pick up from the MagSafe and the others were flying all over the place so it was impossible with only eight choices to get them all back but if you can see there's something missing on the bottom of that shell 
casing. You can see it. See the hole? Know what's missing? Primer. Yeah, the pressure blew the primer out of that case. Um, indications of excessive pressure in rounds or some of the things you'll see are flattening of the primer, um, missing primers, uh, unsupported uh, barrels will give you smiles and case failures. So you get this round in a, he, his question was, in a throated barrel, what would be the consequences? And I think the consequences are going to be the same as they would be in any barrel. If the round is over charged, anything is possible. Now, just out of curiosity, I was also, when I went down to buy these uh, for the video, I was looking for other um, rounds that would fall into this category, and I came across this 40 Smith & Wesson CCI shot shell. Now, this really isn't technically in the same category. Uh, this on the case right there in small print at the bottom it says pest control so it's not really indicated for self-defense but I know there's a lot of people and this is one of the rounds it's in a non-reloadable it's got a plastic cap over uh, pellets that will uh, be blown off at discharge um, I know that the the phrase shot shell is going to intrigue people enough to think maybe, well, it says pest control, maybe I can use it for self-defense. Let me tell you right now, no. No, no, no. Um, you'll see in the video, I started at, uh, I think it was 15 feet, barely put any holes in the paper, moved it into 10 started getting uh, some impressions on the paper. It wasn't until five feet where you start doing it, any damage. At five feet, you're, in, you're gonna be one step away from hand-to-hand -hand combat with somebody, so you wanna stop that event long before five feet. So not an option, don't even consider it. So there's other questions out there about uh, so penetration, you know, over penetration, collateral damage. Um, I'm going to put a link on, on this video to another gentleman, uh, TNN Outdoors, a friend of Hickok 45. Those two guys know what they're doing with weapons. He, TNN does a lot of uh, analytical uh, bullet penetration testing. Um, he does a video on these, good, great video. He does another one on, um, I think it's Bulldog or, I can't remember the name of the round, another um, low penetration type of uh, round that uh, he comes to the same conclusion that once you start looking at uh, controlling penetration, you're, you're looking at almost neutering the round as far as uh, self-defense self -defense issue in some cases. So where do you go from here? And, um, let's just say, for instance, that you're really sold on this defender round or the swap round. Um, you might not have a Glock 27. They're saying a Glock 22, a longer barrel, might take up some of that recoil. I guarantee you it's not going to take up enough. I have shot a lot of Glock rounds, a lot of different weights, a lot of different recoils. Um, you might get one round off 
and then uh, your time to reacquire target under a stressful situation is going to be infinitely longer than you might want it to be. And as, as you are stressing and trying to reacquire, the, it's going to wind up being a snowball effect and you're going to wind up spraying anyway, spraying rounds everywhere anyway. Um, What, in my mind, I came up with is, for my home defense, is the FN57. A lot of people are going to argue with me about this, but let me, let me make my point real quick and then um, we'll go from there. This weapon is probably the lightest full-size gun on the market today. And when somebody says low recoil with this, believe it. After I stopped filming, I decided to do double tap headshots at 25 feet. You can do them all day long and feel like a you know, professional shooter. My point is, if you're putting rounds on target, the collateral damage issue becomes focused. You don't have to concern yourself that much with spraying rounds all over the place. Secondly, ammo. This clip holds 20 rounds what I call Belgian badass. You have a choice um, with ammo. Let's say you really are focused on rounds that are not going to over penetrate. Uh, a company called Elite Ammo. They make a number of rounds um, in the Protector series. There's one that's a 50 grain that's a little fragment um, doing almost 2,000 feet per second. I would much rather have 20 rounds of that with complete control and knowing that uh, if one or two get away from me that they are going to fragment as opposed to a uh, defender round that might go through a couple of walls because I lost control of the weapon due to recoil and stress. So. You've got a light weapon, you've got a lot of ammo, you've got the ability to illuminate the target, you've got um, sorry, there was no round in the chamber, but again, you, you have a number of advantages going for you. Now, if you can practice with something that isn't going to make you flinch every other time because you're anticipating the recoil, you're going to become much more proficient on target acquisition. In the end of the video, I, I wanted to compare the recoil from this mag safe, mag, mag safe with some standard rounds. I also brought with me my Glock 20 and my Glock 29. I also purchased while I bought the mag safe. I bought some Buffalo Boar. You'll see me shoot that in the video. These were 180 grain uh, full uh, jacketed hollow point. If you actually look at them, the, Buffalo Moors using uh, Spear Gold Dots as their jacketed hollow point. And they're advertising this at 1300 feet per second with 782 foot pounds. So you've got 180 grain coming out of a Glock 29. You'll see me shooting that. Um, and if you look, my recoil from the 
10 mil, and even the uh, also so we shoot the zone. Spear gold dot. These are 180 grain um, factory loads. Actually, this is the uh, law enforcement one. Again, out of the clock 27, you'll see less of a recoil when I'm shooting those shooting the buffalo boar and even my souped up 10 mil 155 grain, 1,350 feet per second. Um, pay attention to the, the initial firing of the mag safes and notice how much my, my hand rises. And I'm, uh, I'm being honest, I, I had the same grip whether I'm shooting that as I do with the 10 or Smith and Wesson and uh, hold that, uh, spear hold that. Um, the first couple of rounds really shocked me as far as uh, what I experienced on recoil, and from that point on, I, I was prepared for it, but still, a lot of recoil, um, very expensive. For eight rounds, you're looking at anywhere from $1.75 a round to up to almost. 270 around to 85 around, sometimes even three dollars around. Um, the FN can also be considered an expensive round, especially if you buy um, specific. You can buy uh, FN um, the 47 grain with the VMAX. Not a bad round, opens up, Hornet Days of Emax. Well, it's a good stopper. This is, uh, I've got, in this one, I've got, and the green tip on that is uh, Elite Ammo's uh, Penetrator, 50, uh, 55 grain bullet. Um, but depending on how you're buying your five, seven rounds. Um, these that you would use for home defense, uh, say the Protector series, uh, you're looking at a buck twenty a round. Say you load up a mag full of those and you keep them as your home defense and you know that you are good to go as far as um, shots on target and over penetration. Um, I know I'm missing stuff. Uh, hope uh, I can cover it later. If you've got any questions, tie them into the video and we'll be happy to see what I can do for you. Talk to you later. In response uh, to a question, I'm going to do a little test in the black stock barrel.
do not want to count on this uh, anyway for some time. Yeah, okay, 10 feet. Piss somebody off. Try five feet. Yeah. All right. So, unless you're gonna. Seven feet. We will switch to
Trisha, my mind, I love you. Anticipating the 